Hey, welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Ring Short Stories. This is Jeff Wells. I've had the privilege and opportunity to take the gospel around the world. 20 years, 10 different Olympics, and literally around the world. Today, I want to talk to you about Tokyo 2020. The one that got away, if you will. The fall of 2019, I was privileged to travel to Tokyo with the International Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention. I was invited, along with some other pastors and mission leaders, to pray and meet with and plan with both uh, missionaries and local Japanese pastors about how we can make the most of the opportunity of the world coming to Japan during the 2020 Summer Olympic Games to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> 104, another edit. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> So I'd never been to Tokyo before, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a huge city, but I loved it. I loved being there. It was such a joy. Some of the things we got to do was to meet with the local pastors, um, got to worship um, at Tokyo Baptist Church, um, and got to do something really unique. That one Sunday, we worshiped at Tokyo Baptist Church that morning. That afternoon, we went out and we prayer walked both the largest, one of the most uh, traditional and highly respected Buddhist temples. Um, and then we, uh, the uh, Mijan, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Sensoji Buddhist temple in Tokyo. And then we also prayer walked the grounds of the Mi, uh, Mi, Mija Shinto Shrine, uh, which is located kind of in the center of Tokyo. And that shrine is dedicated to Emperor Meiji and his wife, Empress Shokin. And I had I'd done studies about other faiths. I was familiar with um, Buddhism and Shintoism, but vaguely, very surface understanding and exposure and experience with any of those belief systems. And it was profound to be able to prayer walk those areas. Now, in both of those situations, in the Buddhist temple and the Shinto temple, you basically have the, 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 the temple building itself, and then you have the grounds surrounding and leading up to the temple. And so, the farther away you are, the less significance it has. But as you grow closer to both those temples, they weren't located in the same place, but my, I'm just using that as an illustration. The more significance and meaning it had for that faith system. And in both of them, there was a very clear supernatural element. There was a lot of superstition. There was a lot of um, buy this trinket, perform this ritual, get this blessing kind of thinking. Uh, we happened to, that day happened to be a very popular cultural um, day in on the Tokyo calendar. So a lot of people had the day off. So they were both very, very busy, crowded. And so, not only were we able to prayer walk those areas and see how um, they feel like they have to approach God, um, unfortunately, not the one true God, and, and then deceived um, understanding of, of the one true God for sure. But we got not only to see how that looks for them in their religious practice, but we got to see the people. And something that I learned prior to going to Japan in 2019 is that it is one of the largest unreached people groups in the world, which is really surprising to a lot of people. But you have to understand the Japanese culture that for the longest time, they were a very intentionally isolated nation state um, island. And so, it was very rare that they would allow um, anybody who was not Japanese to come to the island. And um, 
And that was especially true in the 19th into the early 20th century. And so it's, as, although interestingly enough, they have a, they had a history, a long history of attacking nearby um, Asian uh, cultures that were not Japanese. And, and there was a sense of, through their emperor structure of nation leaders that um, they were, they weren't just um, political leaders. They were seen as godlike deities themselves. And so they were not just respected and revered, they were worshiped and uh, adored. And so you see that more in the Shinto side of expression of the Shinto faith than the Buddhist. Um, but the Buddhism itself has a, a very long history of symbolism and of r ritual that again philosophically speaking with 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 buddhism the, the kind of the height of buddhism is that you disappear <laughs> you you no longer exist and that's that's kind of your goal which is an odd kind of goal to shoot for if you will a truly dis, um, devaluing of the human being um, as god created us and so it was a very eye-opening very illuminating experience well as we all know uh the pandemic shortly into the uh, year of 2020 just ground the entire world to a halt in any number of different ways. And one of the greatest impacts was the summer games that were scheduled to take place in the summer of 2020 in Tokyo, Japan. Up until about that spring, I was still hopeful and prayerful that we would be able to be there on the ground sharing the gospel. And then the decision was made that, um, they weren't even going to hold the games that summer. They were going to postpone them to the summer of 2021. The hope was that the pandemic would be able to be under control by then, that vaccines would be available, that would make it not as um, impactful on on people and people and, and communities. And when you look at a, a city like Tokyo, that's as big as it was, uh, they were very concerned about it being out of control and causing leading to the deaths of, of many, 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 many people. And so once it was postponed again, the hope and the prayer was, well, once they schedule them, we'll be able to go then. Well, again, we roll into the uh, calendar year, 2021 uh, COVID and its impact is still um, much at play. And the decision was made that um, some of the early people to get the vaccine would be coaches and athletes. And if they had the vaccine, they would be given permission to travel um, to be in Japan for the games. But no international spectators would be allowed. They would only allow Japanese um, spectators and coaches and athletes to um, be at the game, view the games live. And so it was the first time in uh, 20 years that I had to miss an Olympic outreach opportunity being on the ground. And so in uh, the summer of 2021, uh, Tokyo 2020, uh, parenthesis one is what I called it. Um, we were an exclusive ground team, uh, I mean, support team only. Um, so we, um, I essentially led um, posting of daily prayer needs that I was aware of from uh, some of the Japanese pastors and churches I'd connected with, uh, events that were happening, um, th anything that was in the news that I could grasp hold of that we could be praying about, I shared those. And it, it was very odd and different, but it was odd and different for the world, not just me or Olymp other ministries who were missing out on the opportunity to be in there during the Olympics. And so that's how we made the most of a very challenging situation. And again, coming it out of that, um, the expectation was and the hope was that by uh, the Winter Games of 2022 in Beijing, China, that the pandemic would be largely under control and that um, spectators would be allowed to attend then. Well, calendar wise, the end of the Summer Olympics to the beginning of the Winter Olympics is typically only about 14 to 16 months. It's a very short 
time between the Summer Olympic Games. Well, this was shortened even more because the games didn't happen in the summer of 2020. They didn't happen until the summer of 2021. So between the uh, Tokyo 2020 taking place in the summer of 21 and Beijing 2022 taking place in February 22, there was only about seven months um, difference. And the decision was made pretty quickly that just like in Japan, the games would go on, but there would be no international spectators allowed to travel to Beijing, China to view the game. So again, it was local Chinese individuals only who could um, be in the stands for the game games. Only um, coaches and athletes could come to town for the games. It was very, very limited. That's why one of the things as we look forward to Paris 24, as I'm recording this podcast in the fall of 2023, the hope is that Paris 2024 will be kind of the first true Olympics since the pandemic disruption that started in Tokyo 2020. That's a lot of different numbers. It's a lot of different things, but I'm just telling you, God is always at work. There's always opportunities for us to um, make most of the gospel um, in our daily lives and in special opportunities. And that's where I would just encourage you again to prayerfully think about, wow, God, I never thought about the gospel during the Olympics. And just be praying about how uh, people, ministries, churches um, around the world right now who are praying for and planning on being in Paris, in Italy, in LA, over the next three Olympic Games in this decade, communicating the gospel. Pray for those opportunities. Pray for those plans. Pray for those logistics. Pray for those needs. Be an answer to some of those needs. We need your help to make Paris happen. Paris 2024 Outreach happen. Go to beyondtherings.net. You'll see more information on the support page. We know what it's like to be there and the power and the potential. And we also know what it's like to have missed those opportunities. We don't want to miss any more. So join us in prayer. Join us in the mission of taking Jesus to the world gathered during the Olympics as we see God bringing about Acts 1-8 all in one place as we seek to be his witness to everybody everywhere. And I pray that that's your, uh, your prayer and my prayer for our daily lives as well. Thank you again for tuning in to Beyond the Ring Short Stories, and I look forward to sharing with you again next time.